Greetings. About a year ago, we bought an inexpensive uh, PTZ camera that I made a video reviewing because I was pretty impressed uh, by what you could get for the money. That video is still the most popular video um, on my channel. And because of that video, every once in a while, other manufacturers reach out and ask if I want to look at one of their products. And so that's what we have here. I did not buy um, this, so I just want to be clear about that uh, up front. It was sent to me by the manufacturer. Um, but I also don't make any promises uh, about what I'm going to say. Um, and so this review is, is genuine and how I genuinely feel um, about this FOMA Co uh, HD PTZ camera. Now, what's in here is sort of their base model camera, similar to the one I reviewed uh, from a different manufacturer a year ago. It's a, a PTZ, it's a 20X zoom, uh, and it's HD, it's not 4K uh, or anything like that. And um, does not this one does not come with NDI or any of those fancier features. Uh, so this retails right now on Amazon for about $650. What made me interested in reviewing it is that this is actually the Amazon Choice option. Um, if you uh, Google or you search for PTZ cameras, um, I'm not entirely certain how much Amazon Choice means, but um, it is a popular purchase. So I wanted to see when they offered to send it to me. I'm like, sure, I'd love to see if it's any good. So um, let's take this one out of the box and put it through its paces. All right, so here we go. We've got our Focamo PTZ streaming camera. Um, already I can see this actually has a unique packaging, um, different than uh, any of the other cameras that I have reviewed. Most of them come in pretty much the exact same box. Um, mostly because I'm sure most of them are made in the exact same factory. Um, this one has a different um, box arrangement, which is, I guess, nice. Um, and already at the front, we get our um, PTZ instruction manual here. Um, again, this is not the NDI model, um, but I imagine they are largely the same. Um, this one is actually in color, though, if you can see that. And that's, that's I don't know that I've actually seen one in color before, so that's, that's a nice addition. Uh, all right, right at the top here, we got, oh, okay, okay. So this is cool. This is um, our mounting plates. So normally, um, in fact, I don't have yet to see a camera that actually comes with wall mounting and ceiling mounting plates um, in the box with them. Normally that's an additional like $25, $30 purchase. We've purchased several of them here. Um, but these are um, plates uh, for that purpose that just come with it. So that is, that's a nice feature to have. We got some uh, mounting hardware. Those uh, wall anchors look a little puny. I think I'd probably use something more than that uh, for me personally. And some more mounting hardware. And on this side we have, um, oh, some of the legacy cables. It's nice that they come with these because the chances of you being able to find one if you ever needed one is pretty limited. But this is actually, uh, while it looks like VJ, this is actually a serial type connection uh, for uh, PTZ controllers that require um, like serial control. Um, those are pretty, uh, few and far between today. Most of them are on the on network standards and things like that, but um, don't throw it away. You might need it. That, yeah. pull that off. All right, what else? We're the remote. It's, okay, we got the remote um, with it. And this is actually a slightly different remote than what I've seen. Again, most of the ones I've reviewed so far have all come with the same remote. Ooh, that's nice. Um, this one's actually a slightly different remote, seems to have similar features, pretty lightweight, um, you know, I'm not expecting much there, uh, but, you know, he seems to have most of the controls you would expect to find on your remote, so we've got that. Got our power um, adapters with a pretty decent amount of cable length to it, looks good. Um, these are just a two-prong, uh, which can be helpful in some of your wiring situations uh, for that. And now for the camera itself. Let's move this. All right, so the form factor is um, a little different um, than some that I have seen. This is clearly not just a, a continuation um, of a PTZ Optics or something else. Um, this is a, a different, and I'd have to do a little Googling to see if it's totally unique to Focomo, uh, but um, it, it, it definitely is uh, a unique standard um, to their form factor, though it looks fairly similar. It's not identical to the ones I've seen before. Uh, we've got our lens there. And then around back, 
Uh, let's take a look to see what we have. Maybe if I put it like up on that, we can get like a good shot there of it. All right, so we've got um, our system select that tells you that helps you under, uh, set which um, resolution you're out go going in and out uh, or going out. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously it only goes out. It's a camera. It makes images and they go out. That's how cameras work, Jeremy. Ooh. All right, um, and then you've got your um, RS-232. That's that serial connection. Uh, you can daisy chain these off of each other. So if you do go the serial connection route um, for controlling your cameras, know that they have an in and an out. You want to keep those straight uh, because you can daisy chain multiple off there. Got your HDMI, which you expect to find. Uh, your USB, your traditional USB C is not USB C, just traditional USB, uh, which is fine. Uh, you've got your LAN connection, power switch, your power in, um, and then your line in, um, which is all really great. Now I'm not. I'm gonna have to look to see exactly what this guy is. Uh, it, it 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 looks like a uh, video out, like an like an old school component. Um, uh, video out. So I'm going to have to check that one out. It says CVBS. Let's I'll check out what that one is. But um, the four factor is good. You got your SDI um, right there, which you would expect to find, which is great. We actually have been moving a lot of our cameras over to be connected through SDI instead of HDMI. Uh, much more stable at longer runs. Um, and we do like that. All right. On the bottom here, let's turn it over. Uh, let's see. You've got your um, standard, uh, you know, uh, screw mount holes. So, that, you know, any, any same same standard you would find on any tripods or anything like that. I do like this. Okay. A lot of them that I've reviewed just have the screw mount hole, which is fine. Um, this one actually has the additional pin hole. So on your um, tripods and stuff, you're going to see that there tends to, there's usually the screw mount and then there's another little pin hole uh, that helps you align uh, the camera or whatever you're mounting to it and make sure it's facing the way you expect it to face. Um, that's a nice feature. I haven't seen that before, uh, which is great. And then of course you've got um, your serial numbers and everything else you would expect to find on the bottom. All right, so overall, I would say first impressions, it's got everything I would expect it to see. Um, it looks honestly great. The, it, you know, you don't buy these things for the styling uh, by any means, but it just it looks really good. Uh, the lens looks good. Um, the, the action on it and the movement on it. Um, you know, feels good. I can hear the motors in there whirling. Um, and you know, it's not something you're going to mind having in your space. All right, so now we got it out of the box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up to uh, the television and let's take a look at its picture and uh, how all that works. Just a quick note about the mounting hardware that comes with this. The wall mounting bracket seems solid and of good quality, similar to what you might pay 20 extra dollars for on Amazon. The ceiling mounting option is actually rather clever. It comes in two pieces, so you can mount one piece to the ceiling and the other piece to the camera and then they just slide together and you secure them together with screws uh, in these little holes. I would say both look like reasonably good options for mounting your camera. All right, now that we have our FOMOCO uh, camera out of the box, I went ahead and hooked it up to the TV and let's turn it on and see how it does, oh. I do love the way the PTZ cameras do a little self-test at the beginning. Um, oftentimes we talk about it as their happy dance. Did they do their happy dance? This one has a different happy dance um, than uh, most of the other ones I've seen. Um, usually uh, the uh, camera will actually rotate up during the um, self-test phase. This one actually rotates down. That and a lot of other small changes lead me to believe this is actually from a different family group uh, than the Smart AV camera uh, that I reviewed earlier. Okay, so as you can see, this is kind of our out-of-the-box um, performance um, of the camera. I haven't really tweaked any settings or anything, and I've got it um, pointed at a test card that is just a kind of standard color test card um, that I've been using to test a couple different things around here. Now, I did, uh, I put some batteries in the remote. It does not come with remote batteries, um, which is not a big deal, two triple A's. Uh, and we're gonna try out a couple of other things here. First, we're gonna zoom in on our card a little better. 
So there we go. So this is a PTZ camera, and so you can do PTZ things with it. Um, and while it's really popular to hook these things up to a controller, um, don't overlook uh, the remote and everything that the remote can do. And this is actually a nice remote. It's it's good size. Seems to have all the features you want. Um, I actually like the layout um, of this remote um, a little bit better. You've got you know your zoom controls for zoom in and out, and then you've got your manual focus controls uh, with the auto button right there, which is just so helpful because. If you start messing with the focus, um, you know you can you can mess with the focus on your camera if you want to, and 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 change around you know how it looks and 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 try to, if you need to kind of tweak the focus a little bit. Uh, but then how do you get it back? Well, you just hit the auto button, and then the autofocus takes over again, which is just great. Um, some of the remotes actually bury that button down somewhere else, and I, I don't really particularly care for that one. Um, but let me take a look. See here, we'll get it kind of focused on our card. Um, Overall, I'd say the, the performance on this is on par or, or maybe even slightly better. Um, the color representation uh, looks uh, pretty accurate. I'm not an expert in these things, uh, but I do think I have a pretty okay eye for it. And I can tell you for practical purposes, um, it's great. The, the zooming is good and it seems to keep focus pretty well. Um, they, one of the things they do advertise is that it does have a fast focus system. So we kind of move around to something else. Uh, let's see, we'll zoom down a little bit, and we'll zoom in a little bit. There's actually my smart AV camera over there, uh, the, 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 the review that launched the channel. Uh, you can see that's right there. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I'd say, you know, as, as a PTZ camera, it is a PTZ camera, and it works um, pretty well and works as I would expect it to do, and the quality of it looks um, pretty pretty decent. Um, they do, um, on the remote, have a preset system, as, as most of them do. So if you get it to where you kind of want it, uh, and you got a you know, place you want to really look at, uh, you can go very simple to hit set preset, and then ca call that preset one. Um, and then if I hit the home button on it, it just goes back to just normal. And now if I hit the one button with that preset I just made, just zooms right in. So one use of this, if you are kind of a solo independent operator, um, you know, the range on these remotes is a pretty standard remote range. So you got pretty decent range. So what I know is some people do is they keep the remote, you know, on uh, on their stand up where they're going to be speaking or presenting from. Uh, and then they just kind of move through the presets uh, with the remote as they move maybe across the stage um, or the sanctuary or wherever it is that they're going to be. Um, so you do have that feature for you. Uh, with which is great. A um, couple of things uh, that I noticed and uh, liked about it. I did look up this one connector on the back the, uh, that I wasn't aware of, the CVB CVBS. Um, it is a component system of sorts. It's component video and blanking system. Uh, it was what it known, known as, which is a was the common Everybody used it standard um, for security cameras um, at one point in time, and it's slowly being replaced by higher quality and HD standards. Um, so that is there if you have like a legacy security system, um, apparently a lot of those will use uh, that CVBS system. So that's what that's for, um, I guess. All right, so a couple other like party tricks that I, that I can kind of see that it has. Um, one is it does have all of these cameras typically have um, on-screen menus. Um, as you can see, this one's looks uh, pretty robust and is a nice system. It's actually, I like that it's a little bit bigger. Some of the ones that I've seen are actually pretty small up in the corner. This one um, is bigger um, and you can do um, some basic camera control. You can do things like, you know, change out your, you can do some color. You can, uh, you, you know, automatically you can adjust your white balance in here. Um, I'm just running it as it came out of the box, uh, but you do have those tweaks and you have them right here on your on-screen guide um, rather than having to load up the, the back end web page configuration system that, that all of these camera systems have. So that, that's a really nice feature. Um, so if you want to get in there and, and do some tweaking um, of your color and your image and how you're focusing and all that kind of stuff, um, you can. Uh, this, there, there is actually the one more uh, party trick that uh, I found out about as I was perusing the manual. Uh, we're gonna give this a try. So most places will mount the camera this way. You know, you'll put some kind of base underneath it uh, as far as that goes. Um, if you were to say, mount it on your ceiling and turn it upside down, it automatically flips the, uh, 
the, ca the, the, the picture. There is some kind of, they've got some kind of orientation sensor uh, built into the camera itself. This is not a feature I've seen anywhere else. Um, normally it's a manual step where you have to go in. Uh, oh, there it is, flipped it again. Uh, where you, a manual step where you have to go in and tell it that you've ceiling mounted it or, or mounted it in a different way. Um, but uh, this one will let you do it, I guess, all by its little old lonesome, which is, which is pretty cool. So um, I will, uh, I'm going to record some direct footage um, from the camera uh, as well so you can get a good feeling of, of how it works and what the image quality is directly from uh, the HDMI feed on the back. Um, but overall, I'd say the, the, the FOMACO um, PTZ is a really good and interesting uh, entry into the kind of low end, I, by that I kind of mean sub $1,000 um, PTZ market um, at $650 currently on Amazon. I'd say it's actually slightly less uh, than the Smart AV I, I reviewed before. Um, and that, of course, doesn't um, include the extra little goodies you get with the mounting brackets and um, all the other things that, that come with these that you're going to spend, you know, 30, 40 extra bucks to buy those things if, if you want them. The fact that it comes with all those stuff um, is actually a pretty great deal. So as a deal, this is a great deal. Um, this camera, is this the camera I would buy? Um, probably not. Uh, assuming everything else is the same, and I'm sure it is as far as the image quality and everything else, I would step up to probably at least one step up in the, the FOMOCO range um, and get the NDI compatible camera. Um, that is a nice little benefit. You may not use it right away, uh, but a lot of camera controllers um, are now go moving to the MDI um, as the standard for camera control um, away from uh, OnViv and Visca and those sorts of things. So, so so, and then the ability to like preview over NDI and do some all the kind of party tricks you can do with NDI is, is pretty worthwhile. Um, so I would probably go up at least one in their model range um, and get the NDI version. Uh, this is also a 20x zoom, uh, which is fine for smaller spaces. Um, again, probably we're spending the little extra money to get the 30x zoom. So, um, so this guy at 650 is a great entry point if you just need with something basic. It's here for you, um, but I would probably spend the extra $100, $200, um, and you're still going to be in that sub $1,000 price range uh, for a typical H for regular HD camera. That's not going to get you 4K, but frankly, 4K is overkill for a lot of people these days. Um, but I would I, right now, um, if somebody were asking me, you know, what which camera do I get for an entry level, um, you know, PTZ um, camera? We're just stepping up into that world. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and give it to the phone. Co probably over uh, the the smart AV. Um, I have tested some of the newer smart AV stuff, and they are those are fine as well. Um, I would say in a lot of ways they're comparable in terms of performance, uh, as far as you know, kind of a layperson perspective on it. Um, but this guy, um, I like the design of it a little bit better. I like to look a little better. I like all the extra features you get with it, um, and the interface, like the on-screen interface and the back-end interface, um, are are just a little easier to use, um, and it just feels like a really good robust package for the price. So this is some test footage that I captured through my ATM Mini. So this is the HDMI feed out of the camera into the H ATM Mini into my laptop. I'm overall really impressed with the quality. I did slow the zoom speed down um, so we could get a nice slow zoom. The colors look very good and the focus doesn't seem to have any problem keeping up. Initially, I had thought this camera was at least on par with the Smart AV that I've tested before, but with this side-by-side -side comparison you can see, the Focomo is actually a great deal ahead of the Smart AV, especially in terms of color and focus quality. So I'm gonna move this from uh, good to very good in those categories and say overall very impressed and when you actually do see them compared one to another directly, you will definitely see an improvement. All right, so that is the FOMOCO PTZ camera, and uh, I hope you found this uh, video useful. Um, if you did, feel free um, to, to leave a comment. If you have any questions, I really try to answer those um, as, as best I can. Uh, and until I see you again, thanks for joining me. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe, and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions and the feedback you give, so keep that coming, and I will keep making them. Thank you.